is within us, even this moment right now. You are an awesome God, and there is none like you. There is none that compares to you. Heaven is your throne, and earth is your footstool, and we give you praise for it. And let the church say amen. You may be seated. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God, and I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by my name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am thy, the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift my soul. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and the enemies and my foes come upon my, to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of his temple that in the time of trouble he shall hide me in this pavilion in that secret of his tabernacle. He shall hide me and he shall set me up upon a rock. Our God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren, that's you and I today, that are in this world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, states this, that after you have suffered a while, will make you perfect and established and strengthened. He will settle you. In case you're wondering where I stand on this Sunday morning, in case you wonder where my family stands, I boldly declare that in our suffering, I still believe. I still believe. psalmist told us that they which sow in tears shall reap in joy 
And he that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. We know this to be true because weeping only endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And it is safe to say on this Sunday afternoon that if we live long enough, we will experience heartache, disappointment, and sheer helplessness. And it was late Thursday night, you know, the early hours of the morning on Friday, some 3.30 the last time I checked my phone, everything I just told you is what God was speaking to me through every trial that I have gone through this past week. I don't stand here today because I want to accomplish anything in my flesh, but I stand here because we have had an numerous amount of people that have been praying for us, and they were saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, and guess what, I'm with you. I believe in so much that it may not be the outcome that we wanted, but I still believe that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, and there's nothing too hard for our God to handle. They that sow in tears throughout all the word of God, Joseph wept, Hannah wept, David wept, Hezekiah wept, Ezra wept, Nehemiah wept, Jeremiah wept, Peter wept. Mary wept. And guess who else wept? Jesus wept. It's in our tears that we find it to be the language of numerous things. It is the language of sadness. Tears are the language of repentance and love. It's very true that the language of tears speaks to us cleansing that we need for our lives. Tears bring forth joy. Tears symbolize hope. Tears also produce desire. And at the same time, tears can produce anger. Boy, have I been angry a lot this week. But there was something that came a hold of me late that Thursday night. That was this very simple truth. When one looks at the Bible, there's an understanding that people who sow in tears are doing something powerful in the spirit realm. People that usually sow in tears would do so under great constraints of limited resources and the seed they took to plant was almost as if they were talking to themselves and nobody else could hear them every precious seed that was cast in the ground was valuable and they were doing it to feed the mouths of their children and it was crucial that they would yield a harvest from the sowing of their seeds and even at that point the sower would often plant in doubt fear and distress there were the pressures of an enemy on coming into the field and sowing their tares. And there were concerns from the wayside that the thorns and the rocks and the birds overhead could steal the seed from the ground. And there was a great burden on the mind of those that were sowing. See, to plow in troublesome soil produced a very difficult work. And it brought blood, sweat, tears, and pain from the body of the man and the woman who worked in the fields. Yet the word of God tells us that there is a great spiritual law that prevails and that is this. Through tribulation we enter to the joy of the kingdom of God. Which leads me to believe that God means for us to reap in joy that which we have sown in tears. In the historical books of the Bible, you'll read about such people as Daniel, Moses, Joseph, and the Hebrew boys. And in doing so, they resisted, they murmured, they complained. And here's why. Because they never really always understood why he did what he did. And I am convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt, neither will we always understand it. His ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And for many, if not most of us, somewhere... Somehow and sometime along this journey for us all, the unsaved loved one, the one that you buried out of season, the ultimate illness that is absorbing your body, the season of uncertainty that you're walking in right now, the unforeseen circumstances cause us to find a place where we say, God, what are you going to do now? Where do I go from here? Such is the case as I was sitting in my office 
One week ago this Sunday, my phone rings and my precious wife says, Jason, we got to go. It was an unexpected trip to the emergency room that soon followed. It was the unexplained condition through which two doctors gave us a gruesome report that we're going to lose our baby girl. An unbelievable moment knowing the miracle of just being pregnant by itself that she could not live past birth and yet ends up fading and passing in my wife's womb. One might wonder with all of these circumstances, when trouble comes, where do we go from here? How do I respond when things that happen are beyond explanation and beyond reasonable doubt? What am I supposed to do when I'm hurting, broken, confused, and bruised in my spirit? God, you promised me a baby. You promised me this deliverance. You sent your word. Where is your word at right now? You look at me today and think, well, I'm not real sure of what he's going through. This message today is not just about a baby we lost. It's about some unanswered prayers that you have thrown to the Lord today. And you have yet to see God show up for you. Let me just tell you right now, if you're not dead, God's not done. I don't have anything to prove today. I just got to bear my heart. I love this church with everything inside of me. And you have shown us some love and support this week. But God began to speak to me. This thing is bigger than Michael and London and myself. This thing is stronger. There is a war that is raging against God's people to get us offended at God. So if we become offended, we become bitter. Honey, I've got way too much before me to become bitter when God wants to give me a blessing in his kingdom. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard after the help of the Holy Ghost. It's not over. God is still in control. Come on, is there some in the house that says, it's not easy, but God is able. I really just wanted to kind of teach today. That's why I wore a lapel mic, so forgive me if I get a little happy. It's not easy. The answer lies within the way that we deal with what life handles us. Standing in a windswept valley beside the fresh tin graves of his now dead children after his wealthy, beautiful livestock is burned by fire, Job, who I should tell you never sinned nor charged God foolishly, not even with his mouth. When he heard of the devastation, the Bible tells us he fell upon the ground, ripped his clothes off, his mantle as it says, grabbed a razor, shaved his head, and guess what? He fell upon the ground and he worshipped. He said, naked came out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave... And the Lord hath taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And in that crucial moment, Brother Alamar comes, where we read a conversation, a dialogue between Job and his wife, when she said, don't you still have your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? It's my opinion. I don't see this in Scripture, but it's my opinion. This is my sermon. I'm sticking to it, all right? It's my opinion that God was using Job when he simply stated, perhaps in his heart, why curse him and die when I can bless him and live? If you read anywhere in the scripture of the Bible, it tells us that Ediphaz, Beldad, and Zophar, how would you like to name your kids that? Joined Job in his mourning, and together they wept. Everybody said they were crying. And they sat there for seven days and seven nights. Not one word spoken, for they saw that Job's grief was very great. We read in the scriptures that he would face days when his body was clothed in worms, having deep sobs of pain, sores oozing all over his body. Most likely frustrated because wherever he turns, he feels like God is not there. I'm over here to the right. Where are you, God? I mean, over. hey, God, are, are you over here? And there's no answer. And the silence of God 
most likely becomes downright intolerable. And it's in this darkest hour where Job is in the midst of devastation, quite possibly battling the chokehold of depression, having lost everything, racked with pain and living with uncertainty. We find Job says, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble, but he cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. And in this monologue, Job delivers a powerful prophetic word that I want everyone in this room to incline your ear to when he says there is hope of a tree that if it be cut down that it will sprout again somebody shout again shout I still believe that the tender branch thereof will not cease though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth bows like a plant. I don't know if you feel this way or not, but I don't think it's a coincidence, nor is it an accident, that Job references a tree or even a plant, for that matter, to the hell on earth that he's going through. Reaching up for heaven, but all he has is hell and high waters all around him. Anybody been there before? Anybody there right now? None of us want to tell the truth today, huh? It's in the deserts of the Middle East or the Palestine. I have discovered a portion of the Sahara Desert that there is a plant ignis of the region called the Rose of Jericho. Or other words called the resurrection plant. And the Jericho Rose, as you can see it right there, it's not really the kind of beautiful arrangement that you want to give to your spouse, men, after you got into a heated argument. It's not beautiful. It's unattractive. But the distinguishing mark of the rose of Jericho are not its fragments and fragment of aromas, nor the vibrancy of its beautiful petals, but the characteristic that distinguishes this rose of Jericho is that it can go days, weeks, even months in the most severely dry climates and survive through almost any dry season without receiving so much as one drop of water. In the dry season when the sun is blazing, the temperatures are rising, that rose will tuck its parched limbs and withdraw its withered branches and it will tuck itself in and it will wait. Let me say that again. It will wait. It will wait until the rain comes. If it be days until the rain comes, it waits. If it's weeks, it will wait. If it's months until the rain comes, it will wait. For as long as six months dry, Parched without any water whatsoever, the Jericho rose, this resurrecting plant, will wait all by itself, withered, wilted, withdrawn, but always waiting. And at the very first sign of rain, the moisture turns and comes in the air, and that resilient rose of Jericho that looked like it was once faded, that appeared to be dried up and lifeless, that resurrecting plant will come back to life as if nothing ever happened to it and its limbs will spring forth and branches will yield their fruit as if life has never been better and as if the dry season were nothing more than a momentary inconvenience. And Job is saying that at the scent of water, the tree doesn't even have to have a rain branch, a raindrop fall. It doesn't have to feel anything coming down from the sky. It's just the aroma of the rain that says it will bud and come forth again. I just want to pause and tell you, and I'm almost finished, that other emphatic counts and examples are throughout the word of God about trees and mankind. I just want to tell you, here's what Job says to me. If there's hope for a tree, there's hope for me. It's not just some type of karma hope where I'm going to sit around and wait for the energy of my situation to change. It's not a contingency hope. Well, if it works out, great. It's not a pessimist hope. It's half full or half empty. No, it's a contagious hope. Come on, there's some hope dealers in the house even right now that know what I'm talking about. I've been through the fire, but I wasn't burned. I've been through the rivers, but I didn't drown. Oh, he slay me. Yet will I trust him. 
I still believe God has great things for my life. I still believe God has great things for your life. It's not over. I still believe God has a harvest for new souls because we've got a pastor that is sowed in tears. We've got a pastor's wife that is sowed in tears. I've seen it. It's not over, pastor. God's going to send the harvest. Come on, somebody. Your lost loved one can come home. God can restore your marriage. It is not not over but you don't know what I'm going through you don't know what I'm battling that's all right God knows and if God knows everything is all right I think we should lift our hands right now and love the Lord right now come here just because I want to dig up something in my old library and if Brother Lance didn't feel it was right he would have stopped me and I would have submitted to that I would have said okay but I'm not the only one in this room that's in the struggle right now I'm not the only one that's in the fight for my life and there are some ignorant people that might even look at my situation and say I don't understand and when I say ignorant I'm not saying because they're fools they just haven't been there and done that. I don't ever recommend you getting the t-shirt either, by the way. But I will tell you that there is a word in the Old Testament of Joshua where they took 12 stones and they put them around there by the river. Every tribe, every representative of that stones. And they put them there. And they said, when their children come and say, what mean ye by these stones? You can look at them and say, this is where the Lord hath brought us through. There's going to come a day when my little boy London is going to come back to me and say, Daddy, how did you and your mommy survive it? How did you even get through it? I'm going to say, London, I went to an altar. And I laid a memorial before the Lord. Did you understand it? No, son. I didn't understand it. Did you have the answer? No, I never got the answer except for Jesus is the answer. And he is the author and the finisher. And whatever he says, I have to obey that voice. Because that, am I helping anybody right now? That memorial is symbolic of three things. It encourages me the next time I go through this for the step, a trial that I don't have answers to, a trial a situation I don't have the outcome for, when God makes a way, I can go back to that memorial and say, if God brought me through then, God can bring me through again. Somebody shout again. It testifies to people in this house that may go through trials and tribulations and not have the answer, I can say, hey, Jeremy, come here, my brother. I know you've been through some heartache and pain, and I know you've survived it, and the blessings of God is upon your life. I'm really trying to minister to you right now in the Holy Ghost. God has given you a fresh start, and God has given you a brand new beginning. You know how I know it's going to be okay? You know how I know this time is going to be all right? Because this is where God blessed me, and this is where God can bless you. And what you do is together. The third reason we say, devil, do you see that? Back when you said it's not possible, but we said with God all things are possible. In your face, devil, I'm not a survivor. I'm a thriver. And God is with me. Greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. Somebody shout, I still believe. Just five minutes and I'll be done. Just five minutes. I don't even know what time it is. 3.30. You got time for this? Come on, brother. You okay? This is good. Brother Clint Weaver. I am bitter that you're moving, but what is this? Water. It's water. How do you know it's water? water. <laughs> how, 
how can you tell? Ha. Huh. That's one of the five senses that God blesses with. If I, uh, pastor's done it so I can do it. If I, <laughs> there goes my paycheck for the week. <laughs> Shh, listen, listen. What is that? That's the sound of water. An altar? Come here. Would you like to taste it? Is it water? It tastes like water. Hey, come here. Come here. Come here. Holy Ghost, come here. Put your hands out. What's it feel like? It feels like water. So everything that we have just demonstrated, you can drop it. He saw it. You heard it. He tasted it. And he felt it. But Job said the mere scent of it brings restoration. Even when I can't see it, he's working. Even when I can't feel it, he's working. You never stop. You never stop working. Ah, I don't have to feel him. I don't have to touch him. He don't have to touch me. I don't have to hear that word or even see that word. But something in my spirit says, restoration's on the way. Ah, I still believe. Come on, Lighthouse. It's time to get your hopes up. It's time to say God is for us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Come on, stand your feet. Lift your voice right now. Lift your hands. And whatever you have need of right now, ask the God of heaven to bring the rain. Come on, bring the rain. We've been praying. We've been searching. We've been fasting. God, send the rain. In case you're wondering, no, this has not been easy today. I don't even know if I have any more tears in my system to cry at this point. What I can tell you is every step I take, God is ordering it. He really is a way maker. He really is a mountain mover. Let me tell you how I know God cares. And it may mean nothing to you, but to my wife and I, this is everything. Her name was, is, Willow Louise. I can't tell you when we started liking the name Willow, but it's just something we fell in love with. Louise is after my wife's deceased grandmother, someone she loved dearly. There's a reason why it's raining today. God's already confirming the word. Rain doesn't scare me in a metal building. It just gives me that extra climate that I need to make a point. When you walk out this building today, you'll smell the rain. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. My wife and I were driving. She wanted to get out of the house on Friday. So we just drove with Stephen to Starbucks. And she wanted to drink from Zaxby's because they got good lemon water. Hallelujah. We're driving, and we come up here to the corner at Old Humboldt Road, and we would go straight to our house. And, and right there on the corner behind the fence, we have never seen this before. Almost one year living there, Brother Harris, there's a beautiful willow tree right there. And yesterday, I'm one of those weird guys that if I could chase a tornado, I would, but I have a wife that won't let me. Maybe next time she goes to sleep, I'll just give her a little extra. No, I'm just kidding. Yesterday, the storms were brewing. 
And I walked outside, and Sister Hicks, I was looking at, at the clouds, and I was just admiring it. I had never seen it in one year of living in my house. On the other side of the fence, in the backyard, is a willow tree that's growing right now. And through the wind that was blowing, I saw the limbs just flowing with the cadence. That tree was already planted. It reminds me of the time when the children of Israel came through the Red Sea after being in all those years with the feet of bondage. All that bitter water they dealt with. On the other side, the Bible tells us there was a tree already planted. And that was better water to replace all the bitter water. And just because you can't see it right now does not mean that God's not doing it. Just because you can't feel it right now does not mean that God is not working it out. In so much, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall not have the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Be not weary in due season. In well-doing, rather. But in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So the step, while we're waiting, God is working. I know in the Holy Ghost today I have obeyed what God's asked me to do. I just ask you to lift your hands one more time. The altar is open. Whatever you want to do, if you want to come, they'll get everything set for the move of God that wants to happen. But I'm telling you right now, there ought to be a cry come forth in this house. God, we've been praying. We've been searching. We've been reaching right now. Come on, would you come to this altar if this message is for you today? Come on, somebody pray with your hands raised. God, send the rain. Come on, Lord, you're a way maker. I trust you, Jesus Christ. I don't have the answers right now, God, but I believe that you're in perfect control. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I'm asking you to be in this altar if you need God to touch your life right now. Whatever you have need of, the Holy Ghost is here. It's not over. It's not the end. God can do it again. God can restore. God can rebuild. God can give you hope. You've just got to trust him. That is who you are, God. You're a way maker. Come on, sing it. Come on, everybody lift your voices right now. Let God do it. He's the author and the finish of your faith right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Jesus, have your way right now, Lord. In this house, I pray, God, bless those. God, that have prodigals, they want to come home. Let them come back to the house of God. Bless those that are broken and bruised. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost be with them right now. Come on, Lighthouse, lift your voice right now. Lift your voice right now. There is, the Bible says deep calleth to deep, and there is a deep move of God in this house right now. We have heard a specific word from God for specific people, and this kind of passionate preaching calls for passionate praying. 
There needs to be some passionate praying in this place. We're not patty caking right now. There's souls in the balance. I want you to listen to me, Lighthouse. There's souls in the balance. There's marriages in the balance. There's emotional issues in the balance. If we can't pray for ourselves, I want you to find somebody to pray for and pray with. I'm calling Lighthouse to be sensitive Christians and ministers right now, one to another. We're not patty caking today. I, want, I call you to prayer right now. I call this church to passionate ministry and prayer right now, to let the gifts of the Spirit work within this altar and in this auditorium. Come on, lift your voice aloud. Lift your voice aloud. Seniors, I need your help. If we're prayer warriors, let's put it to practice right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, those in the back, those in the front, those to the left, those to the right. Pray, pray. They're going to sing again. But they're not taking place of our voice praying and calling out to God. It's not dead. It's not over. Let life be breathed. Let hope, let hope be breathed into you today. Come on, let God use you to be sensitive to the needs of others right now. Where's my altar workers at? You claim to be a minister in this church? I want you praying with somebody right now. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, let's shake ourselves out of apathy. This is serious business. This is God's business. Stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. 